bag, Mr. Wallace? Uh, yes, yes, please. Yes. I'm glad you came to see me before you left. Well, I had to do that. And I hope it's a wonderful job. Yeah. Write and tell me all about it. The big noise hasn't interviewed me yet. <laughs> they won't send you back now. Not after bringing you all that way. Well, bye-bye, dear. Goodbye, dear. Bye. Look after yourself. I will. Here. Don't forget this. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's going to be a bit queer. Hmm? Well, we haven't seen each other all that often, but there's no one else now. Oh, come on now, old love. Switzerland isn't all that far. I'll write, don't worry. <laughs> you won't escape the brotherly advice. <laughs> At London Airport, please. Well, bye bye. Goodbye, dear. Take care. Good afternoon. Uh, do you speak English? Oh, yes, sir. A, a little. In a moment, I will come. Uff, passa. Uff, passa. Nay, nay, do me. Hilarusa. Excuse me. Uh, um, it would not look good for the hotel to carry a man out of the front door. Uh, uh, sir? Uh, my name is Wallace. Wallace. Ah, yeah, yeah, Wallace, that is right. We are, we are expecting you. <laughs> um, w what happened then? Oh, I do not know. He must have been sick when he got here. It was not the food, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please, just sign and let me have your passport. Oh. I will fill it in for you. Thank you very much. The best room is yours, Herr Wallace. We have nobody here at this time of the year. Thank you. Hello? Mr. Wallace? Yes? Well, this is Mr. Bernays' secretary speaking. We're so glad that you've arrived safely. I'm sending you a car, which will be there in 20 minutes to bring you to the clinic. Mr. Bernie would like you to bring all your luggage with you, as he's made more comfortable arrangements for your stay. Oh, well, thank you. Will you please pay your hotel bill when you leave and keep the receipt? It will be added on to your other expenses. Uh, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Wallace. Yes? Uh, my name is Wallace. Oh, yes. Will you follow me, please? Mr. Wallace? Uh, yes. Mm. That's fine. Will you come with me, please? Mr. Bernay is expecting you. Oh, th um, thank you. Come. come. And furthermore, I have it on the grapevine that Incorporated have just won a $50 million contract to build their new Austrian plant. Excuse me, Mr. Bernay. Mr. Wallace is here. Mr. Wallace! Pleasure meeting you. How do you do? <laughs> Oh, don't bother about all this. I come up here two, three times a year to shed my executive fat, but I keep right on working. Had a good trip. No difficulties. Uh, no, I, I just followed the instructions your office sent me. That's great. Sit down. Oh, thank you. I thought Mr. Wallace and I might seal our contract with a drink. Well, we checked out your references and qualifications. I'd just like to make a brief rundown on one or two of these items here. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. Well, here's to you, Mr. Wallace. Welcome. Thank you very much, sir. You had a couple of years with this outfit in Leicester before you joined the Farm Industrials Group in London about eight years ago. Your shower is ready, Mr. Bernay. Oh, thank you, nurse. Seven years. Correction. Seven. And we're planning to run you in with a kind of conversion course. And not that I think you have anything to learn. I see from your personal details you're more or less alone in the world, Mr. Wallace. You have no close ties in England. Well, um, I... I know it's selfish, but we like that in a candidate. It means he's more likely to be married to his job. 
<laughs> well, my sister's still there. Oh, yes, your sister. Your next of kin. Uh, that would be Miss Wallace. 48 Caroly Drive, Thames Distance. Yes, yes, sir. Yes? Flowers well, for you, miss. For me? Yes, do you mind signing the book? Oh, how lovely. Oh. Switzerland. Why? You've never met Hagen, have you? Who is Hagen? Rather dubious character. Should that concern me? As a freelance agent, he'll work for any side, providing the money's all right. Huh? We never trusted him too much. Although, mind you, he's been extremely useful to us in a number of instances. <laughs> and now he's not quite so useful. We've lost contact. We don't know what's happening to him. Maybe he's gone over 100% to the opposition, which would be uncomfortable. That's for you to find out. Uh, perhaps he's just decided to retire. Retire? Where do I start? Well, we pay his money into a bank account in Zurich. Mm -hmm. It's all in this. All right. Drop me the other side of the lights, will you? OK. disappearance of Hagen. My informant tells me that loss of contact could be final. It is reported that Hagen died at the Brjanska Clinic, Einbeck, Switzerland, three months ago. At present, I am in Zurich checking on his bank accounts. Yes? Is Herr Bayer from the bank, Hedrick? Ah, yes. Hagen had two accounts at our bank. Uh, one was in the name of Hamilton and the other in the name of Hadley. All the money in the Hadley account was drawn out by him some four months ago. Uh, the second account in the name of Hamilton was drawn on last week. Last week? Yes. How much was drawn? Everything. Is it possible that the signature could have been a forgery? A forgery? But why should it be? Because it is reported that Hagen died at the Brjanska Clinic, Einbeck, three months ago. I have seen the check myself. It seemed perfectly valid, but yes, I suppose it is possible. Then why did whoever it was wait for so long? 
Or perhaps Hagen didn't die at the clinic at all. You mean he was killed? Perhaps. <laughs> then maybe someone did you a service. They are entitled to a little reward, are they not? That depends why he was killed. Hagen had a lot of useful information, as well as a lot of money. Hello, could you uh, tell me the time of the first train to Einbeck, please? Guten Morgen. Verena, Sie ist ein neuer Gast da. Ja, cool, Vater. Guten Morgen. Good morning, young lady. Ah, you are English? Uh, yes, indeed. I, I'd like a room, please, with a bath. For how many days, sir? Oh, I don't know exactly. It won't be for long. For sad. What's sad? But you cannot stay for long. <laughs> Can I have your passport, Mr. Uh, Routen? Will you sign this form, please? And I will fill it in later. Thank you. I'll show you to your room. Yeah. Oh, let me uh, take that one for you. Oh, come with me. You have to deal with the warden, say, Herr Rutten. Rutten. Oh, I hope that your holiday here will be pleasant. Uh, I'm not on holiday. I'm here on business. Business? I'm back. Yes, I'm a lawyer. What's up, a lawyer? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I'm here to make some inquiries about a a Mr. Hagen. It's a question of insurance. He stayed here, I understand. Oh, many people have stayed here. I don't know. Then well, we shall have to find out, won't we? <laughs> One moment, please. Uh, could you tell me where the police station is here? Well, it's a Oh, it's right here in the Hofstrasse. It's only hundred meters. Thank you very much. Eine Minuten, bitte. Good, sir. Can I even help him? Uh, my name is Rotten. Oh, an Englishman. Yes. How can I help you, my friend? Uh, that is my firm. Rauten, Rauten and Rauten. Yes, we investigate insurance claims. Ah, yes, a legal gentleman. And which Rauten are you, Herr Rauten? I'm the only Rauten. And what happened to the other two gentlemen? They died. Ach so. Can I offer you a drink? Not at this hour of the morning. If you'll excuse me, it's not too early for me to drink. How can I help you, my friend? I'm making some inquiries about a Mr. Hagen who died at the clinic here. Ah, yes, Herr Hagen. A goat. Beg your pardon? A goat. We are all uh, law-abiding people here. All sheep, as you might say. Sometimes a goat strays amongst us and then things begin to happen. Are you sure you will have nothing? Well, it's, uh, it's a thirsty morning. A um, little water, perhaps. A goat. The security chief from Bern and half his staff came trampling over this very office. My files were photographed and... Uh, Everyone in the village is interrogated. Well, thank you. I wonder if I might have a look at those files. I'll get the documents, sir. Are in uh, German Swiss. Well, then maybe you could tell me all about it. I don't know about that, Herr Rauten. Perhaps you could give me your passport? Certainly. Oh, what's that? How silly of me. I'd, I'd given it up as lost. You had? Yes. Uh, what is it you wish to know about Herr Hagen? Exactly what happened. Everything. We don't know where he came from. Uh, we never found his passport. When he came to Einbeck, it was not the tourist season. For two days he was out walking before he was taken ill. Uh, the Krummenacher girl, uh, the daughter of the landlord, finds him in his room very sick. Krumenacher sends him to the Brjanska clinic. For two days, Dr. Brjanska is fighting to save him. But his condition has gone too far. The body was, of course, identified. There can be no doubt about it, Herr Rauten. The Krumenachers identified him from a photograph. So did Brjanska. Will this be the man? Yeah, that is a man. Tell me about Dr. Brjanska. He's a fine man, a brilliant surgeon. He has done much for us here. Mm -hmm. What happened to the body? 
But it was laid out by Bucher, the village undertaker, and buried in the churchyard. All the documents are here. I should like to see the grave. I regret that is not possible. Oh, really? Why not? The body is no longer there, Herr Rauten. You see, six weeks after he died, the widow claimed the remains. She came here, a sad woman. The body was cremated in Bern. I can uh, get you for the particulars. No. No, that doesn't matter, but I should like to talk to Dr. Bajanska. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It is Tuesday. Uh, he's in Einbeck this morning. He's visiting the village hospital. Uh, you will find it a little up the hill in the Rathausplatz. Yeah. Perhaps you didn't know that this man, Hagen, had been working as a secret agent. A spy? Well, surely not. Yes, a spy. Uh, one thing that puzzles me, but I think the answer is very simple. Here is a man who has defected from all sides, who is wanted by everyone and nowhere to go. He comes to Einbeck. But in spite of all these things, he signs his true name, Hegel, in the hotel. He allows himself to be admitted into the clinic under that name. Do you know why? Tell me. He was a sick man. He came here to die. Names didn't matter to him anymore. Hmm. Well, thank you. Sag mir, wenn es weh tut. Es tut nicht weh. Ich glaube, das ist genug. Danke, Herr Doktor. I'd, uh, I'd like a word with Dr. Pajanska. Yes? What is it? How can I help you? Something wrong? Hagen. Sure, I remember. So does everybody in the village. It was quite a fuss when they found out who he was. I thought it was done with. What's your angle? That's a legal one, actually. I represent the claims department of an insurance company. Well, they've got it all down at the Polizei de Vier, haven't they? Well, the certificate's on file and the depositions from everyone concerned. Oh, yes, but it's not so much a question of uh, verifying his death, but of knowing how he died. You see, we have indemnity clauses concerning uh, murder and suicide, for instance, and... Uh... No, sir. I'm afraid it was natural causes, Mr. Rodden. Yes, but I understood that he was taken ill here at the Schweitzerhof and that possibly um, food poisoning... What killed him was organic. The infection was incidental. You see, it was like this. When he failed to respond to orthodox treatment, I had a look around. Found that he'd had a major abdominal operation. The scar tissue was less than four months old. It was obvious that Hagen knew what his condition was. They'd cut him open and found there was nothing they could do about his liver condition and sewn him up again. My autopsy confirmed it. He died from a chronic condition of the liver. Now, Mr. Rotten. I'm afraid your company is on the hook, and we'll have to pay up. Sorry, I can't help you anymore. Now you'll have to excuse me. I have a schedule to keep. Oh, uh, just one other point, Doctor. I, I imagine that he was conscious part of the time. What did he talk about? I can assure you, Mr. Rotten, he didn't mention the subject of insurance. Let's go, Carl. <laughs> Wilhelm, please transmit this message to London tonight. Our surmise was wrong. It seems clear that Hagen is dead. Both hotel and hospital staffs confirm identification. Doctor also confirms by autopsy that Hagen was dying when he arrived here of a chronic liver condition. Whoever it was who drew the money from the Zurich Bank was someone who knew Hagen and his business well, someone close to him, someone he trusted. Whoever it was drew all the money, and as we know of no other accounts that Hagen might have had under false names, there seems no point in pursuing this subject further. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rauten. I thought you were downstairs. All the people have finished their dinner. Oh, <laughs> I hadn't realized that. I'll be down right away. You are comfortable? Comfortable? Yes, yes, yes. Hey. Uh, what is it? Uh, when you come down, will you speak to my father? He's very unhappy. Is he? Why? He'll tell you, Mr. Alton. Ich äh, jetzt fertig, ja? Er hat Fruchtzucker. Ah, gut, gut, gut. Äh, gib mir Zigarre, ja? 
No, 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 De Guerta. Thank you. Good evening, Herr Alton. Good evening. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed your dinner. Oh, yes, yes, very, very much indeed. Good, good. I, I'm glad you liked it. I, uh, I'm bringing a cigar for you, with my compliments. Eh? That's very kind of you. Is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> oh, my Herr Alton, I assure you, thank you. <laughs> I am a poor man, but uh, an honest one. Eh? <laughs> my daughter says that you are a Rachtsanwalt, a, 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 a lawyer. Oh, that's fine. Uh, and that there may be a claim. I swear to you, Herr Alton, the day poor Herr Hagen is taken ill, I am eating the same food myself, and so is Farina. But a uh, claim, you understand, it would ruin me, even though it's not true. There is no question of a claim against your hotel. Are you certain? I hadn't considered it until now. Perhaps you could do me a favor, though. But anything, anything, Herr Arten. What address did Herr Hagen give when he signed in? Oh, yeah, yeah. One moment, please. Uh, Verena? Yeah, Papa. Bring me a Gästelichter, bitte. Oh, please. Thank you. Hmm. Is August, Juli, Juni. Ah, it's fine, May, huh? It was in May, you understand, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Alexander Hagen and the address, the British Consul at Zurich. Well, that was very considerate of him. Yeah, I remember. I phoned them and they sent a man. I see there was someone else staying here that week. Uh, an Englishman. Yeah, 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 Herr Wallis of London. Uh, well, he came the same day Herr Hagen was taken ill. Why did he come here? Well, why should he not come here? It was out of season. How long did he stay? Oh, Wallis, well, I remember. It was uh, one hour or two, no more. There's a phone call from the clinic, uh, and he goes. To the Brajanska clinic? Yeah, to the Brajanska clinic. And he met Hagen here? Uh, ah. I remember Herr Wallis arrived soon after the uh, um, ambulance. He is standing waiting at the desk when we bring down the... when we bring Herr Hagen down on the stretcher. How long was he there? How long? How long was Herr Wallis at the clinic? Well, I don't know. You see, he didn't come back. Well, he packed and took all his baggage with him. Well, he paid for the night, uh, but he didn't stay. It's a brief visit. There was an Englishman named Wallace staying at this hotel the day that Hagen died. He also called at the clinic. He gave his address as 41 Windsor Crescent SW11. Imperative contact Wallace. Find out if he saw or heard anything of interest. We'll await your reply. Yes, like a call at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. Y you would like coffee? Oh, uh, tea, please. Well, I'm a schloss again. Good night. Is it not a fine day, Mr. Alton? Yes, indeed it is. Könnte ich bitte Fahrer haben? Hm? Könnte ich bitte Fahrer haben? Oh, yes, certainly. Danke. Here is your
Despite your query regarding Wallace, he left the UK May the 3rd and has not yet returned. It appears he has no living relatives. There was a sister, but she was found dead after a fire at her bungalow shortly after Wallace left the country. The coroner's report attributed the fire to a gas leak. Wallace, we understand, got a new job in Switzerland through an advertisement in Science Today. There's something curious there. We can't trace who the advertisers were. The whole thing was done through a box number. Several replies, there are still 50 they didn't bother to pick up. Presumably Wallace must have had the special qualities they needed. The advertisement was paid for in cash, and the form itself was signed by someone called W. Burney. Burney can't be traced. If you're satisfied that Hagen is dead, is this affair worth following any further? Please advise. This is Drake. If someone took Hagen's money, they may have taken over his contacts as well, so I must still chase this one. Get Interpol to check on Wallace. If he's still in Europe under his own name, he must be registered with the police somewhere. Find out everything you can about him. Appearance, habits, the lot. And while you're at it, ask the Americans if they have anything on a Dr. Monja Projanska. I'll spell that. B-R-A-J-A-N-S-K-A. Excuse me. Can I help you? Yes, good morning, miss. Uh, I'd like to talk to Dr. Bajanska. Well, what is it about? Oh, now, that's our business, isn't it? Uh, well, I am his assistant. Perhaps I can help you. Rodden. Oh, doctor, how nice to see you. Rodden, I told you all I know about uh, Hagen yesterday. He's dead. A lot of experts came here to check it at the time. Just how long does he have to be dead before you fellows stop dancing on his grave? There is just one more question I'd like to ask, doctor, if I may. No, Mr. Rodden. Go home and pay up. Uh, that's not an attitude that my clients would sympathize with, Doctor. I've told you all I know. It's this way, Mr. Rodden. I uh, wanted to make an inquiry about someone else, Doctor. Another Englishman, in fact. He came to Einbeck the day Hagen was taken ill. Uh, name of Wallace. He stayed at the Schweitzerhof for a couple of hours and then came up to the clinic. Did this man also have a policy with your company, Mr. Rodden? Well, he was here, possibly, the day Hagen died, so I feel he comes within the scope of my inquiry. Okay. Well, I'm afraid you draw a blank this time, Mr. Rodden. I never heard of you, Mr. Wallace. Just a minute. Dig out the word book, honey. That isn't to say he didn't visit the clinic. You see, we run a number of wards with private access. They're mostly occupied by business people who come here for health therapy. Some of them like to bring their office and their problems with them. The Alliertha Schweitzer Hamischer Gesellschaft have a big complex out on the Zurich Road. We get quite a few of their executives here. Who was here, honey, round about that time? Earl uh, Langen was in number five. Langen's from the Alliertha Schweitzer, the outfit I was telling you about. The only other one was Mr. Bernay. Oh, Bernay. I can't help you with him, I'm afraid. Oh, why not? He comes from France, I believe. He, uh... Never writes, you see. He just calls up, see if we can fit him in, pays in cash when he goes. Pity he's so reticent. Why is he shy? His wife, I guess. The Mrs. Bernay who comes with him is a variable quantity. None of them is what you might call the domestic type. This, um, this, um, what's his name you're asking about? Wallace. Well, he could have been calling on any one of them. Those wards are all on the south side and have carports and servant accommodation underneath. I just visit once a day to okay the treatments. I'm afraid that's all I can do for you, Mr. Rodden. Oh, well, um, thanks for all your help, Doctor. We're pretty busy just now, Mr. Rodden. I know you'll excuse me. Certainly. I hope your investigation works out. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> customer. 
Oh, no. This Herr Borkler drone. It is a custom. When he is gone, there will be nobody to make it for him. We have an old Swiss proverb. For a beautiful journey, a beautiful equipage. Good morning, Papa Borkler. Guten Morgen, Papa Buchler! Ach, Verena! Ah, was ist? Das ist der Herr Raut, mein Papa Buchler. Oh, guten Morgen! Oh. Er will dir Pisch fragen, Papa Buchler. Ja, ja. Oh, ask him if he's seen this man before. Der Herr Raut möchte wissen, Ob du den Mann schon gesehen hast? Na, wo sollte ich ihn gehen, Gramm? Ja, you, uh, English? Mhm. Mm How do you do? Oh, you speak English? Uh, no, uh, my uh, wife, uh, she English. She died many years ago. And she taught you her language? She taught me her language? No, no. Um, I... Teach her my language. <laughs> uh, this man died at the clinic about three months ago. I uh, remember a man, but... Aber das ist nicht der Mann, den ich eingesagt habe. Die Leute sehen ihm tot anders aus, aber das ist nicht der Mann. Oh, he says that this is not the man they put in the coffin. Uh, he says that faces look different in death, but he is sure that this is not the man they buried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your further query regarding Wallace. Interpol Vienna inform us that he's living in Austria quite openly. No mystery here. I'm sending you a DPC on him with photographs. By the way, he does have a hobby. He's an amateur taxidermist. He stuffs animals and birds. He's living in Austria, not far from the Swiss border, on the road to Innsbruck, in a place called Einhausen. <laughs> Guten Tag. Good morning. Would you be Mr. Wallace? Yes, I would, old man. I don't think I've had the pleasure, have I? My name is Routon. Oh, well, come in then. Now, you don't stand there. Sure. I, uh, I suppose the police sent you. Police? Oh, they're always sending someone up here. You see, no one in the village speaks very good English. I, I was, um... I was down there for three hours the other day, uh, interpreting for some Irish woman who'd uh, pranged her car. <laughs> Not that I'm all that good at the lingo. <laughs> well, do sit down and uh, tell me what I can do for you. Actually, I'm a lawyer. I was hoping that you'd be able to help me with some inquiries I'm making. Well, anything at all, please, to help. <laughs> Will you have a drink? A bit early for me. Hmm? Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, uh, what do you want to know? I'm inquiring about the death of a Mr. Hagen. 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 Well, I can't help you there, old man. I've never heard of him. Uh, does he... I mean, did he live around here? We understand he died in Switzerland at Einbeck. Einbeck? That's where I had my interview. That will be with a Mr. Bernay? That's right. But how did you know about that? Well, I guessed, actually. I knew you were staying at the Schweitzerhof and that you went up to the Brajanska clinic. I arrived at Mr. Bernay by a process of elimination. Well, you're quite right. 
A proper sell it was, too. I think I will have that drink. Are you sure you won't join me? Quite sure, thank you. In uh, what way was it to sell, Mr. Wallace? Well, they had me on, as you might say. I find this job in science today much the same sort of job as I had in the old country, only at about three times the salary. And I write for it, get it, and they send me out to see one of their directors, this man Bernay. Well, after a lot of humming and harring, he says he's changed his mind. I, I, I didn't fancy going back after all that. It's pretty cheesed off, I can tell you. Hagen was taken ill at Einbeck the day you arrived. Did you see him there? Just a minute. Do you mean at the inn? Yes, he was there when it happened. That's right. I remember now. They were, they were just carting him off when I arrived. See his face? Well, sort of, but I couldn't really tell you what he looked like. Do you remember if he looked like that? Hmm? Yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> of course, he was um, pretty green around the gills at the time. And you didn't see Hagen again after that at the clinic, I mean? No, why should I? charming place you have here. You bet it is. <laughs> you could say that Bernay was the cause of this. I rather fell on my feet after I left him. Yeah. I didn't fancy going back to the old country. And so, uh, as I still had a couple of hundred quid in traveler's checks, I, uh, I popped down to Cannes. You see, for years I've had a roulette system that I've been working on. And it won you a large sum of money? No. <laughs> I lost half my lot in the first half hour. I was pretty cheesed off, I can tell you. So I, um, I plonked 50 on the first number that came into my head. That's what worked. <laughs> it came up half a dozen times, and I kept putting half back. <laughs> ah, I found I'd won a packet. Really, how interesting. Mm. So I, um, I drove round Europe for a bit by way of celebration, as you might say, and uh, ended up here. I liked it, and here I am. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I've bought myself into a little... Uh, chemical business in Vienna. They're developing an insecticide formula of mine, and very profitable it is, too. <laughs> well, I'm uh, sorry I can't help you about the other chair. Well, it doesn't matter. It's kind of you to talk to me, Mr. Wallace. Not at all. Don't you find it a little boring and stuck away up here? No, I love it, old man. I suppose it's all right if one has a, a hobby, collecting butterflies or something. <laughs> you get crackers doing that. Well, some people find it interesting, but then I suppose you're not the collecting type. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I collect the fauna of the Tyrol, old man. I mount them myself. It keeps me amused for hours. Remarkable. Well, look, do drop in any time you happen to be passing again. I'm always happy to see an English face. Most kind of you, Mr. Wallace. Thank you. Right. Cheerio.
I paid you quite enough money to make certain that nobody would be able to trace me. The Russian won't get anywhere. He's already got far enough to find me, and I'm pretty certain he knows who I am, thanks to your incompetence about this bookler. You'll find you have no cause to be upset. I am upset. Now, don't you ever make another mistake as far as I'm concerned. No. Well, okay. Everything went fine. What did I tell you? With Bookler dead, Rodden has no evidence to connect you with Wallace. Lying down, are we, Papa? No. I am good now. I no lie down. We are going to let them think that you are dead, Papa. Dead. We are going to teach them a lesson. <laughs> This is Dr. Brodzianska. Can I help you? Uh, doctor, I am uh, speaking to you for my uh, director. He wishes to uh, come and 
must live with you for a week for the baths and the physiotherapy. Can that be arranged? Yes. We have a room. When does he want to come? Tonight, if that is possible. That's possible. What's the gentleman's name? Uh, his name is Monsieur Bernet. Yes. We know Monsieur Bernet. He's an old client. He can have his usual room. We shall be waiting for him. Who was that? Rodden. He's coming right up here. Jansker provides a unique service. He specializes in plastic surgery. He studied under Hartford Thomas. They say he was his most brilliant pupil. He not only provides you with a, a new face, but uh, a new identity as well. Really, Rodden, why not a new soul as well, like Dr. Faustus? Very apt. In Hagen's case, it was just a question of finding someone in England of the same height and color characteristics with a minimum number of relatives. Shall we say, um, just one sister who was easily taken care of? Poor Wallace was enticed over here and taken care of too, but I must say, you're a brilliant surgeon, Doctor. One would never notice the scars unless you suspected they were there. The glasses helped to hide them, but they're a giveaway too. Wallace was extremely short-sighted, but those lenses are plain glass, as in fact are mine. I'm sorry, Rotten. You just don't make sense. You were right to come here. You need treatment. You're sick. How many clients do you have, Doctor? Hunted men walking around in security but somebody else's face? How much did you pay him, Hagen? I bet he bled you white. And the evidence, Rotten? Papa Buchler could have provided evidence that the man he nailed down in the coffin was the authentic Mr. Wallace and not Hagen here, but unfortunately, there was a fire at Papa Buchler's place, and Papa Buchler was inside at the time. Poor Papa. How terrible. When I consider that he never hurt anybody, I agree with you. How terrible. It's late, Rodden, and you've had your little game. Now, would you and your friend mind getting out of here? Oh. Uh, uh, oh, uh, unfortunately, the game isn't over yet. You see, there's the body, the cadaver. For a beautiful journey, a beautiful equipage. Now is the witching hour when murdered men rise from their unquiet graves. Mm -hmm. 